Pardon the interruption, but I'm Mike Wilbon. Tony, we're off all next week for the holidays. Aren't you looking forward to this vacation? Um, I think you already started it. Not Ugh, here. My bad. They got me my in the bad. big seat. Warming up in the bullpen. <laughs> Cue the, the big right hand. <laughs> No, but that, that can't be your walk-in music. Welcome to PTI. Tony bolted a day early, apparently, so we get to enjoy the gift of having our great friend, Mr. Frank Isola. It's not a bad holiday cheer. Could be no, some bad. people out for the holidays, though, clearly. <laughs> exactly. Let's start with the Dodgers landing another coveted player just two weeks after adding Shohei Otani. Japanese pitcher Yoshinobu Yamamoto has reportedly agreed to a 12-year deal worth 325 million bucks. Yamamoto is just 25 years old, has won three straight MVPs already and Japanese size with a career ERA of 165. Frank, what does this do for the Dodgers and where does it leave the rest of baseball? Yeah, happy holidays to the Dodgers, not so much to the San Francisco Giants or the New York Mets. It's made the money is incredible, Mike. You know, just the posting fee that they have to pay his Japanese club is $50 million. That's just a little less than the Oakland A's uh, payroll for last season. And when you combine it with Shohei Otani, so the Dodgers go out, they get the best player in the sport, then they get the best free agent pitcher. The combined salary is over a billion. That's how someone had a great stat today. That's the combined salaries of the Oakland A's over the last 14 years. So it's the haves <laughs> and the have-nots <laughs> in baseball. Teams like the Pirates, you know, they can't compete with this. The Tampa Bay Rays can't compete. The Do Mike, here are the salaries. Shohei, the contract. Shohei, $700 million. Yamamoto, $320 million. Tyler Gra Glass now, $136 million. And don't forget, Mookie Betts, $325 million. Freddie Freeman, $165 million. So they have the best pitcher. And you, the numbers are off the charts. 860 innings. He strikes out five times more batters than he walks. He's great. He's never thrown a pitch in the major leagues. I get that. The one thing I like about baseball just because you have the best doesn't guarantee you anything because Shohei's yet to have a postseason at bat and Yamamoto thank you is yet for to leaving the game in the there. majors what Frank, it's going to do Mike Frank, is going to get them into the play I'm playoffs. tired of all the hype of sports all of sports all of it every time somebody loses someone or it's the death of the whole franchise every time somebody, somebody signs somebody now they go straight to heaven no they actually don't which is why you play the games which is why the Giants, by the way, have won three full season yeah. World Series since the Dodgers. Now, kudos to Mark Walter for and his team because they go for it. They're not sitting on their riches. They are out there trying to win and, and seemingly make the smartest moves available. Who wouldn't make the moves that the Dodgers have made? Of course you'd make those moves. Yep. It doesn't guarantee anything, no. The Angels had at one point... Three of the, out of what, the 10 best players in baseball? They couldn't even make the postseason. The Dodgers are already in a much, 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 much better situation. It guarantees nothing. The hype is just crazy on these things. I, you know, let's see. The Dodgers still have to get out there and compete. People have to stay healthy. They address their pitching needs. My God, not, yeah. not, not with Shohei right now, but with, you know, with, with, with two other starting pitchers they have now in the rotation. Let's see. You know, it, what it does, it's going to always put them in contention to make the playoffs. We know the way the playoffs work now with so many different layers. There you know, at any moment, you can go up against a contention. couple of hot pitchers, and, and then, then you don't get in. A couple of things, though. You know, everyone's looking at the Yankees as losers. Yes, they wanted Yamamoto, but they did address a need that they had with Juan Soto. He hits for power. It doesn't strike out. The two big losers for me are the New York Mets, who obviously were in big on this, but also look at the San Francisco Giants. They wanted Shohei Otani. They wanted Yamamoto. Their attendance dipped a little bit. They're competing with, with the Dodgers. As much as the yeah. Angels are competing with the Dodgers, the Giants obviously are. It's a rival, same division. They turn out to be the big Let's losers. Let's actually in this play thing, some Mike. games. Let's play some games. Uh, I, People yeah. want to pronounce. Well, you can crown them. To quote the late, great Dennis Green, you can crown them, or we can play the games. Yeah, you're right about that. Uh, meanwhile, Shohei was in attendance last night to see the Rams roll to their fifth win in their last six games. Matthew Stafford threw for 328 yards, 164 of them to rookie Puka Nakua as the Rams built a 23-point lead over the Rams, I'm sorry, over the Saints before winning by eight. Mike, at eight and seven, 
has Sean McVay's team earned its way into the contender category? Not yet, not for me. You know, I got to see more, and I like what Stafford's doing, and he and Nakua. I mean, it's a. It, it, this is a nice developing team. That's what it is. It's developing, yeah. and I got to see another step, Frank, before I put them with the 49ers, the Cowboys, and the Eagles. And although the Eagles seem to be tumbling, and you got issues yep. with who's going to call their defensive signals, and then what's wrong with that defense, or why isn't it like it was last year? I hear all that. I'm not putting the Rams with them yet, but there are a couple more weeks. They could be there, but the, the problem, part of that is they're not going to win their division. What are they going to be? What are they looking at? A sixth seed? What are they looking at then? Maybe playing in Detroit, that would have some interesting matchups, wouldn't it? Yep. Um, so they're fun. The, the Rams are. They're sort of back in it. And Sean McVay has done a tremendous job with that team, but I don't have them with the Niners, Cowboys, and Eagles, do yeah. you? No, I, I don't. And last night's game, too, the Saints handed them the game at the end of the first half when they didn't go when they go for it on fourth down, they don't convert, and then they give the Rams half the field to march down the field and score another touchdown. One thing about the Rams, and give them a lot of credit, you know, they went all in on winning a Super Bowl, which not every NFL team they is did. able to do, and, and they won. They rebuild, and here we are just a couple of years later, and like you mentioned, right now, they would be a six seed. They would play Detroit. That's Jared Goff, Matthew Stafford. The offense has been off the charts. The last five weeks, they're averaging 430 yards per game. They're scoring 32 points per game. The issue for me would be defensively because Von Miller's not there anymore. Jalen Ramsey's not there. Aaron Donald's still there, but he dominated the league a couple of years ago. And their kicking game, not good. They're, you know, they've missed 11 field goals this year. You get down to the playoffs. How many of these games are decided you need them. on field you goals? Do. I love what they've done. They have a great organization. Sean McVay is a brilliant coach. But a contender, you mentioned the teams. I'm taking all those teams first. Yeah, I'm taking all of them above. Hey, listen, somebody can and often does pop up, and you're like, whoa, where'd that come from? And maybe we should have seen this, and maybe some people do see the Rams in that position defensively, I would wonder as well. But you know what? Unless it's a, the only potentially great team I see in the NFC is San Francisco. I'm not putting Dallas and Philly there, so yeah. maybe they can be had. And I'm not putting Detroit there, so maybe all those teams can be had by a team like and L.A., another L.A. team yeah. in the playoffs. Yeah. Let's move to the NBA and ESPN's MVP straw poll of 100 media members, though not these two. Not, Phil and Frank <laughs> was a consultant, neither was I. Through the first two months of the season, Joel Embiid, Earn the most points with Nikola Jokic second, Giannis third, Shea Gilgis Alexander fourth. Now, Embiid is the incumbent MVP, of course. Frank, looking forward from here, would you take Embiid or the field to win the MVP? Well, I heard that I would be, if they wanted 250 media members from ESPN, I would have made the cut then, and I would have been involved <laughs> in this poll. And I would have Much said, higher. you know what, the Much only higher. reason I wouldn't vote for Embiid is because he's only played 65 or more games twice in his career. Remember, that's the cutoff mark. He's been right up to this moment, a, you know, a third of the way through the season. He's the MVP of the league. He's actually better this year than he was last year. And a couple of things. Last. You I know, agree. he's averaging 5.9 assists per game. So that's right now a career best. And he's taking 22 shots a game. And that's a career best for him, too. So he's so involved in the offense. I don't want to kill James Harden because he won an MVP with Harden. But the combination of Tyrese Maxey and Joel Embiid, I was at a game this year where Embiid was one assist shy of a triple-double after three quarters and didn't play the fourth. The most underrated part of his game is his passing. And the numbers he's putting up, Mike, 30 and 10 every night. The last time he didn't have at least 30 and 10 was November 17th against the Atlanta Hawks. He has been absolutely dominant. He's been great. And, Frank, I voted for him last year. I did, too. I voted for him two years in a row. I certainly voted for him last year. And I might vote for him this year. But if you're asking me, as the original question was, Embiid or the field, I'm going to take the field. Here's why. I also, Oklahoma City is must-watch must basketball for me almost every game. Shea Gilgis-Alexander is that good. He's that guy right now. And he's got that team near the top. They've been floating around one, two, no lower than three in the Western Conference. But right there, shoulder to shoulder with Shea Gilgis Alexander for me is Anthony Edwards, Frank. Yeah, Nobody mentions best record in the West. People got him sixth and seventh. It's like, what? Anthony Edwards is the best player 
and it's not close, on the team with the best record in the NBA. So what are we, why is his name not appearing? I don't want to hear because he's in Minnesota. Shea Gilders Alexander's in Oklahoma City. Yes, sometimes you have to have a season to introduce a player. Shea Gilders Alexander had that last year before even his own peers take him seriously enough. Those two guys to me are even with Jokic and Embiid and Giannis. That that's I, I had a Luca. Sorry. And as great yeah. as LeBron has been, and as great as Steph Curry has been, their teams aren't going to be as good as Oklahoma City and Minnesota, apparently. Yeah. Mike, let Let's me get, let me give you a couple let me give you a couple of stats though. So right now okay. he has more points than minutes played. The last player to do that for a full season was Wilt in 61 He's having, it's great. But, but what, He's do, a great but what do you make of Embiid talking about the MVP award? He won it last year. Isn't the big thing now? We held yeah. Jokic to this standard of, yeah. you won MVP, what are you going to do in the playoffs? Embiid's never He's been out of the second honest. round. That's how but everyone's going to judge it. In, you, I, I accept people for the personalities they have. And this is Embiid's personality, and I enjoy it. And so it's fine. He doesn't need to be like Jokic. He doesn't need to be stoic and talking about racing horses in Europe. Hey, I like him being for get who out he is or whatever he wants round. to talk about. He needs to he get does. out. I don't care what his Agreed. personality is. He's got to get out of the Agreed. second round. I, he needs to get out of the second round regardless of what his personality is. Let's take a break for coming up. Who has the edge when the Cowboys need to fish on Sunday? And Anthony Davis says the Lakers faced a must win against the Thunder. In December, go, as my how's man. that going to go? SGA, well, where you got him, Frank? They, where you got SGA on your MVP list? Got to be top four, maybe top three. Pardon the interruption is presented by... Time to spank Frank and toss up. Let's get the first one from the producer over the loudspeaker. Toss up, which team do you favor on Sunday? The Cowboys or the Dolphins? You know what, Frank? This probably shouldn't be easy for me. You look at the Dolphins' record. It's not the record. It's who they've beaten. How about yeah. four of their games coming against the Jets and Patriots? Four yeah. of them. Not to then mention Carolina, the Giants, <laughs> and the Panthers. That's seven of them. So, you know, so the Dolphins haven't beaten anybody. But you know what? That's part of the reason I'm going to take them at home to beat the Cowboys, who've had three, you know, a couple of really impressive wins lately. But I'm going to go with the, with the Dolphins. They need to win this game. And if we look at the season, the one thing that's been true is the teams that need to win, particularly when they're playing at home, if they're going to be any good, they yeah. win that home game. Dolphins beat the Cowboys. It was the Commanders, not, uh, not the Panthers. I, I think the Dallas Cowboys – are going to respond big this week. Two and of their last Commanders three games. And the Panthers. They, they gave up 406 yards and 35 points to Seattle. And then how about what they did against Buffalo? Buffalo ran the ball for 266 yards. They scored 31 points. And a bigger deal than that was they got bullied all over the field. I was a little surprised by the way Dallas they is handling it. Now, Dal they you, you ran down around. the records in the games. Dallas has at least beat the Eagles. They have a, they have a great record, Dallas, but they got a quality win against the Eagles. I think that defense got called out a little bit this week. I expect a much bigger performance from them against Miami. Okay. Sounds good. That sounds completely reasonable. Um, and by the way, the Dolphins did beat the Panthers and, and the Commanders. They just got a my slew fault. of I was trying, I was trying to trick you. They got you. a slew of nothing. <laughs> What's next? Toss up, which team is more likely to win on Saturday, the Lakers or the Thunder? Well, you know, Anthony Davis coming off this back-to-back -back losses that the Lakers had said they're, you know, this is must win. And, and here's, I'm not about to disagree with him. I know it's December. I get it. And the league, you know, God gave us that in-season tournament because they wanted people to pay attention to the NBA before Christmas. Well, people are paying attention now for a different reason, a real <laughs> reason. The Lakers and the Pacers can't win a game since they won right here in Vegas a couple of weeks ago. Oklahoma City, as you know, Frank, is better. I know the Lakers will play with some urgency, but we don't know the health situation. I mean, LeBron missed a game. AD is whatever. He's questionable or probable or something. The Lakers aren't that good. And Oklahoma City is that good. I'm, I'm looking at SGA as the MVP candidate even higher than LeBron right now. LeBron's been great this season. Oklahoma City wins. Uh, right now, Anthony Davis and LeBron are both 
questionable for the game. LeBron obviously didn't play last night against Minnesota. And who is Anthony Davis? Don't no one on the Lakers should ever guarantee anything or say something is a must win unless your name is LeBron James because he's the one that's driving the bus and he's going to be 39 in eight more days. Great point. Something interesting Great happened point. in Oklahoma City last night, though, and Chet Holmgren played well. Shea Gillis Alexander did. They beat the Clippers, and that stopped the Clippers' nine-game winning streak. And, oh, yes. by the way, yes. Kawhi, the godfather of load management who had played in the first 27 games, did not Finally play last night. Finally missed one. Hey, how about Finally that? Finally missed one. Mid-December. Chet Holmgren, in, Chet Holmgren, Rookie of the Year. Say it with me. Come on now. Chet Holmgren, yeah, Rookie of the Year. He's not a rookie. He's been in the league. He was in the league last oh, year get, getting the treatment, the training, and getting paid. The rules allow us to not vote for him as a rookie. Newcomer That's of the year, it. not rookie. Uh, when by Yamup is a pro in Europe. Come on. Let's take one last break, Frank, but still to come. The Pistons are close to stinking on a historic level. And Florida State is elevating its efforts to get out of the ACC. Oh, boy. It's suing. My God, enough of Florida State. It should be thrown out of the league. Game Oklahoma SEC. City. Please sip responsibly. Part of happy hour. Time to get happy, people. Happy 75th birthday tomorrow to Jack Ham. Ham didn't get as much attention as a fellow linebacker, the more violent Jack Lambert. But how about this list of accomplishments? First team All-Pro six times, eight Pro Bowls, four Super Bowl rings, a member of the NFL's 75th and 100th all-time teams, and the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Ham also made the College Football Hall of Fame for his career at Penn State, where he was All-America and part of two unbeaten teams. He recently told Ron Cook of the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, quote, I don't have a trophy room in my house. I loved playing. But as Chuck Noll said, You've got to get on with your life's work, close quote. You know, Mike, what you loved about the NFL back then, because no free agency, the team stayed together. So you got to know guys like Donnie Snell and Mel Blunt yes. and obviously me and Joe Green yes. on the offensive side, Franco Harris, obviously Terry Bradshaw, Lynn Swan, and then my guy, who I think is one of the most underrated players in the history of the sport, Stallworth. certainly at the wide receiver position, John Stallworth. John Stallworth. Ah, he was no a question. great player. Hear, great hear. Player. Agree with you on all of that, Frank. Happy anniversary, Chaminade. 41 years ago tomorrow, the tiny NAIA school pulled off the greatest upset in college basketball history, beating top-ranked Virginia and his two-time National Player of the Year, Ralph Sampson. The game wasn't televised, but I saw it firsthand at courtside, covering it for the Washington Post while in Hawaii for the Aloha Bowl. Virginia had already beaten Patrick Ewing in Georgetown and Akeem Olajuwon in Houston. But in this game, they faced Tony Randolph, a 6'4 kid who had regularly played against <laughs> Ralph in high school. Rude Randolph, who said he knew what Samson was going to do, scored 19 points in Samson, who was recovering from the flu. I know because I heard him coughing in the room next to me in Hyatt. Just 12 points to Chaminade, one by five. All right, a couple of things. Number one, I know from experience, being sent to Hawaii for an assignment is not work, it's vacation. That's one thing. A month it's earlier now, work. Virginia played a Russian team with 17-year-old Sir Arvita Sabonis starting at center. Yes. Were you at that game? Yes. Then I'll be impressed. You yes. were. I was. All right. Come on now, Man. Frank. What are you, you talking about? I love Ralph. <laughs> I love Ralph. I hate bringing it up because of that. I, I really do. I mean, he had such a great career, I, it, but, but it was a moment that I'll, I'll never, ever, 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 ever forget. You Happy trails to the Pistons for the 25th game in a row. Last night's loss came at home to the Utah Jazz, a team missing four of its seven top scorers and playing the second night of a road back-to-back. -back. Come on! More than 18,000 fans were nonetheless on hand in Detroit with a good number of them chanting, sell the team and owner Tom Gores. Come on. The Pistons are now just one loss away from tying the record for most consecutive losses in a single season. They could break the overall record of 28 by New Year's Eve. First year coach Monty Williams said, quote, this is incredibly hard to understand. It's amazing they haven't won yet. They play right over there tomorrow. Four more games in 2023. They haven't won in November. Haven't won in December yet. Amazing. All right, we're running out of show. Let's run to the big finish. Florida State is suing its own conference, the ACC, Frank, <laughs> to get out of its $130 million exit tax. Your thoughts? 
it's it's always about money, but if they stay in the ACC, their path to making it to the expanded playoff is easier, isn't it? Stay in the ACC. Plus, they have a good women's soccer team. Alex Ovechkin scored an OT to beat the Blue Jackets and snap his 14-game goalless streak. You happy for him? I am, and it was not a meaningless goal. It wasn't some empty netter to add on. It was an important goal. Inter-Miami has landed Luis Suarez. Is that significant? Yes, he's great. He also took a bite out of an Italian player in the World Cup. Jordan Poole and the Wizards at the Warriors tonight. Steve Kerr expects a massive ovation to you. Not necessarily last one. Union Home Mortgage Gasparilla Bowl tonight. Georgia Tech or Central Florida? It's a holiday tradition. I'm taking the Florida team after what South Florida did to Syracuse last night. We're out of time. Thanks for watching. I'm Frank Isola. I'm Mike Wilbon. We're off until the new year. Enjoy your holidays, knuckleheads. You can get the podcast on ESPN or Apple Podcasts. And now, Sports Center. All right, Frank, is the Dodgers spending good or bad for baseball? Yeah, I think it's a bad look from this standpoint. You have these small market teams, whether it's the Oakland A's or the Pittsburgh Pirates. You know, the posting fee that they gave for Yamamoto was $50 million. That's almost as much as the A's entire payroll. But the one thing about baseball, you know, Shohei Otani, the next postseason at bat he gets will be his first. So having all this talent doesn't guarantee you a championship. What is no, going to come close to guaranteeing the Mike is going to be making the playoffs every year, so they're going to have a chance, which is more than Tampa has, more than Pittsburgh has, and the A's have. Yeah, but you, you know what? Every, I, I, every time, every time somebody goes on some wild spending spree, and it's not wild with the Dodgers because they know what they're doing. The Yankees in the 20s when they're playing Ruth and Garrick, was it bad for baseball? No, it wasn't bad no. for baseball. When they did it with Reggie Jackson and all those guys in the 70s, was it bad for baseball? No, it wasn't bad for baseball. We've seen, you know, teams still develop and spin as a combination of ways you can win. The Dodgers are already at the top of the league. I mean, they're already right there. They've been in the playoffs, what, 12, 13 years in a row? They're there. So they're spending, but they seem to spend wisely. They don't. The, the Angels, not so much. The Angels spent, yeah. they, as you mentioned, they couldn't even get to a playoff game. So no, yeah. I don't think when you have teams like the Dodgers and the Yankees, who are the pillars of Major League Baseball, I don't think spending like this is bad for baseball. I'll tell you something else, Frank. If the this 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 renewed emphasis on international greatness. If that comes to Major League Baseball and helps it the way we've seen it help the NBA and just world soccer, football for the rest of the world, how can that be bad? The biggest stars in the world are in those other sports, and they are international. Why not baseball? And remember, it's not just the Dodgers. The Giants were willing to spend that money. Shohei and Yamamoto didn't want to go there. The Mets wanted to spend the money, and the Yankees are obviously willing yeah. to spend the money. They just yeah. couldn't land these two players. All right, that's, that's it. Right. By the way, didn't done. the Mets spend all the money last year and get nowhere? Yeah, look where it got them. dealing their guys after they spent. So spending, not necessarily bad for anybody. Mike, it's the holidays. We're done. Back to you.